Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and in this video we'll talk about amino acid catabolism. So we are going to get an overview how protein is broken down to amino acids and how these amino acids are broken down to nitrogen and how it is excreted. So we know that in our stomach, in our intestine with the help of several enzymes such as trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase, pepsin, all of these things degrade proteins into the simplest form which is amino acid and the amino acid is absorbed in the intestinal epithelial cells and then it moves into the blood which is actually used to make muscle proteins or other aspects, right? But in this video, our focus is how protein breakdown occurs at a molecular level. So proteins are broken down into amino acid. That is the basic uh, constituent of a protein. Now this amino acid is further broken down. The amine part of the amino acid generates ammonia, which is further excreted as urea. Whereas the carbon skeleton is recycled and used in several biosynthetic pathways such as TCA cycle. Now in this video, we'll look at the overview of an amino acid catabolism. So amino acid catabolism, the hub of amino acid catabolism is the liver. So imagine there are four amino acids. So each of these amino acids would donate their amine group to a substance which is ultimately glutamate. So it would generate glutamate. From glutamate, ammonia would be generated and alpha ketoglutarate would be a side product of it. Now this ammonia is extremely harmful and toxic. So ammonia would be converted into a less harmful form which is actually urea and urea is the form which is excreted, right? Now, the process of conversion of several amino acids to glutamate is known as transamination, where these amino acids donate their amine group to glutamate. Now, from glutamate, the process of generation of ammonia is known as deamination, and lastly, the urea cycle generates urea from ammonia. So, this is the overall workflow of amino acid catabolism. So let's look into this process in a bit more details. So the first step is nothing but breaking down of amino acid into glutamate or funneling it into glutamate and all happens inside the liver hepatocytes. So in the liver hepatocytes, any amino acid gets converted into a keto acid and this process is known as transamination or this is just a amine group transfer reaction. So the amine group is transferred to what moiety? So the amine group is transferred with the help of amino transferases and the amine group acceptor is nothing but alpha ketoglutaric acid. It accepts the amine group from the amino acid and itself get converted to glutamate. So from different kind of amino acid, we get the amine group funneled in form of glutamate. And the key enzyme here is the amino transferase. The amino transferase plays an important role in transamination and the key prosthetic group here is pyridoxal phosphate. So PLP is very important for the functionality of the amino transferases. Now let's talk about the next step. We have glutamate and the, am amon the amine group is now in format of the glutamate. This amine group would be released from the glutamate by the help of glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme. This glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme converts glutamate into an alpha immunoglutarate intermediate from which it gets converted to alpha ketoglutaric acid. Ultimately, the ammonia is released. But the problem is this ammonia is highly toxic. It is highly soluble in the blood. So if it is not excreted in proper method, then it would generate huge problem and it can even generate toxicity in the brain. So this ammonia has to be processed in some way which is less harmful and it would be ex excreted 
and that excretion format is known as urea. So ammonia gets converted to urea by the process of urea cycle. So we'll talk about the urea cycle in a bit more details. So urea cycle takes part in the liver, especially in the liver hepatocyte. Inside the liver hepatocyte, a portion of the urea cycle takes place in the mitochondria and portion takes place in the cytoplasm. So in the mitochondria, we have quite a lot of ammonia, which was derived from glutamate by, by glutamate dehydrogenase and the reaction is known as deamination, right? Now, from ammonia, carbamoyl phosphate is generated. With the help of the enzyme, carbamoyl phosphate synthetase. And in this process, as the name suggests, you need ATP to trigger this process. And ATP is utilized to generate carbamoyl phosphate. Carbamoyl phosphate is the first product of urea cycle. Carbamoyl phosphate combines with another product called ornithine, which is already present in the liver mitochondria. Both of them gets combined and form citrulline. And via several intermediates such as aspartate, arginosuccinate, arginine, it regenerates the ornithine, which is ready for another round of urea cycle. Now, the key step in this process is the conversion of arginine to ornithine. When arginine gets converted to ornithine, ornithine is regenerated, but at the same time, urea is released. So urea is excreted in this way. So we understood in this video that what is the overview of amino acid catabolism? How does the process of transamination, deamination and urea cycle work? We have also looked at the enzymes which are involved in transamination, deamination and urea cycle. And in this video, we have not talked about urea cycle or transamination process in details. So in other videos, we'll talk about these processes in way more details. But this was just an overview to give you a big picture. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And thank you.